Hello and welcome to Pittsburgh City Council's Post Agenda for Tuesday, July 9th, 2019. My name is Kim Clark Baskin and I'm your Deputy City Clerk. With us today, we have our sign language interpreter, Dean Engelhoff. The following is a piece of legislation up for roundtable discussion with Pittsburgh City Council and invited guests. Bill number 1775, resolution authorizing a cooperation agreement between the City of Pittsburgh and the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority to provide for the rights and obligations of each party with respect to the other and for payments in capital cooperation between the parties. That concludes the legislation up for discussion. Thank you and have a great day. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this post agenda meeting of Pittsburgh City Council for today, Tuesday, July the 9th, 2019. We are assembled here um, at the request of Councilwoman Gross, uh, and we are here to discuss the purpose of Bill 1775. And so, Madam Clerk, would you please begin by reading the purpose of the bill? Bill 1775. Resolution authorizing a cooperation agreement between the City of Pittsburgh and the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority to provide for rights and obligations of each party with respect to each other and for the payment and capital cooperation between the parties. Okay. Thank you very much. We are, uh, I'm Councilman Krause. I'll be chairing this afternoon's post agenda meeting. We are joined by Council Members Gross, uh, Councilwoman uh, Kale Smith, Councilwoman Harris, Councilwoman Strasberger and Councilman O'Connor. Uh, other members may join us uh, as their schedules permit. And our invited guests this afternoon are Paul Lager, our controller, uh, the Honorable Michael Lamb, and Grant Gitlin. And I believe you have a presentation for us. And so however it is that you would like to assemble your presentation, we'll give the floor to you. Okay. Um, let's start by talking about why we're even talking about this. In 1994, mm -hmm. there was a co-op agreement between the city and the PWSA <coughs> that generated $103 million for the city, which it badly needed at the time because it was bankrupt. Uh, that was the basic purpose of that co-op agreement. Everything in that agreement that generates money to the city and from the city to the PWSA is now outmoded and no longer applies, or you shouldn't want it to apply one or the other. And so this new agreement is an interim agreement that allows you to bridge the gap between us giving you $7.1 million a year, which is just purely giving you money for no reason, no invoice, and um, giving you no money at all, but charging you money, which is what the PUC would like to have happen. So we want to make an agreement that makes a transition and allows you to recoup costs that you should be recouping that are major costs that you have, we have not been paying at the PWSA uh, ever, and we'll go through some of those. Um, we will also talk about what costs you are now going to pay. And we're gonna go through a couple of things which you have in front of you. First of all, you have a copy of the presentation which gives you a chance to make notes on it as we go through if you want to. Um, there's not enough space, there's never enough space. That's true. You can, tell, you can write in the back if you want. Oh, if I can just interrupt you briefly, would you just please introduce yourself and your position with the PWSA, sure. please? Sure, I'm Paul Leger, I am the chair of the board of the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority, and uh, previously I've been a board member. I've been associated with that board for five years. Um, in addition to the presentation, I've given you a summary sheet, which is blue, which lists all of the items that are in the new co-op, the proposed co-op. And I've given you a copy of what the board members use as what I call the crib sheet. This is data that board members like to know and like to have on hand 
and might be useful to you. It's not related to the co-op. It is uh, simply a, a gift. I didn't think it would be appropriate to bring a candy bowl or I would have brought that. Um, but this is a transition document. And so I'll go through what are the main points in the PowerPoint and then you can ask any questions you want. If you would prefer to ask questions as we go, that's entirely up to you. This is your chamber and your post agenda. Um, For the time being, if we could, let's get through your presentation. Paul. Okay. Okay. The first items are the current Kono co-op does not reflect the current and future needs of the two parties and conflicts with PWSA's regulatory obligations. Um, we are now under the PUC, which to me has become a major problem, not a gift. In the beginning, it looked like there were good things, and there are some good things about the PUC, but in fact, we have spent a vast amount of money to be compliant with the PUC. Staff has a huge amount of work forced on them for PUC compliance, and so uh, just the fact that we are complying with everything that the PUC wants means that we have to have a new co-op in place, or the city doesn't get any money. I don't want that to happen because I don't want to go back and force tax raises and lost revenue, and I also want us to be paying for things that we should be paying for. Uh, second item is PWSA is now a regulated utility under the jurisdiction of the PUC, the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission. Is that empty? Oh, that's the clerk's. Um, no, don't move over. He can sit in the air. Robert, would you come up? Yes, sir. Hi, Bob. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I can't see behind me, Teresa. Yeah. Not that good yet. The current co-op does not provide for itemized business-like financial transactions between the parties. This results in exchanges of payments and services that cannot be appropriately documented. And the PUC is going to demand documentation, so we have to be able to document the invoice that it goes between the two. Do you want to change to the next slide? Included in the co-op is an item that says the PWSA and city commit to public ownership of PWSA under this agreement. In addition to that, Councilwoman Gross introduced a bill at our last board meeting on June 28th that guaranteed public ownership going forward and is the same pledge that the mayor signed and that Councilwoman Gross signed as part of her campaign, I believe. No, separate from the campaign. Um, Thank you for doing that and for introducing it. All financial transactions will be itemized, documented, and meet auditing standards. Unitemized lump sum payments from PWSA to city will stop. That's the 7.1 million with no invoice. PWSA will contribute to the city pension fund to pay for other services provided uh, and pay for other services provided um, which will be itemized either in the invoice or in a uh, separate sidebar for this agreement. And right now we pay nothing for pension. Pension costs you $4.9 million for our employees. You pay nothing. Our employees get the benefit and they do not have the Social Security offset. So they are much wealthier in their pensions than uh, the city municipal employees, many of them, and at the same time, you get no money to, to support that, those people in the pension. That's a lot of people. Um, next one. City will have to pay for water, sewer, and fire hydrant usage through a five-year phase-in, and the cost of installing meters will be split. The city will be treated like a commercial customer, and for most commercial customers, the cost of meter um, is purely on them. And so we are splitting that cost, including the construction of vaults where necessary. Right now, many city facilities have no meter. We have no idea how much water they use. 
the PWSA will assume control of the uh, PAWC subsidy agreement, which is currently in the hands of the uh, city and is an, is, operates under a city ordinance and a contract with PAWC. And if you give that to us, um, you will find that we will take the necessary actions related to that agreement. And at this point, there is no subsidy as defined in the agreement. It is less than a dollar. I think it's 42 cents for the average customer. So the agreement has essentially been dissolved, but we would have to take the action of informing PAWC of that. Uh, so that is why we would ask that you would turn over that agreement to us, gets it off, off your table. Uh, PWSA will have the option to cancel the subsidy under certain conditions. If not eliminated, the city will be obligated to pay. So if you don't give that to us, you're on the hook for those subsidy payments after a year, which is what the ordinance says. So we would like to take that away from you and officially give it to us. We have been paying the subsidy, but we have not been paying it under an agreement and we haven't been paying it in, in some people's view legally. Uh, so that is a, uh, a serious problem. Um, PWSA will pay 50% of street sweeping costs to ensure compliance with EPA requirements. And the EPA requirement is that we do street sweeping to keep litter and garbage out of the sewers. Right now, the city bears the entire cost of doing that street sweeping. We are paying and acting as the responsible party on that EPA consent decree. And so we would like to take over our share that we pay for. 50% of the sweeping costs are related to compliance with the EPA agreement. And so while we are responsible for any fines under it, we'd also like to be subsidizing what we are responsible for. PWSA will re assume responsibility for water service lines and sewer laterals in parks larger than 50 acres. City will retain responsibility for water service lines and sewer laterals on all other city properties. This has been a bone of contention, which actually has led to screaming and shouting meetings, which I have attended, um, and I'm kind of appalled by that, uh, over what, who owns what and who is responsible for doing what. So this is the agreement that we came to. There are 11 parks currently that are greater than 50 acres. There will be another one once the acquisition of Hayes Park is complete, and those will be the parks that PWSA will be responsible for. And uh, the other parks are already enumerated. They're not in the document, but I'd be happy to add them as an addendum if you would like that. That might be something that would be easy to deal with. Uh, the city is exempted from tap-in fees for five years because tap-in fees for city spray parks and other institutions in new construction would be very expensive. For instance, one tap-in fee for a spray park at Paulson was $138,000, which was more than the cost of constructing the park. So I want them exempted after, up for the first five years. After that, we can talk to you again. Um, grants easements to PWSA without going to council. Everybody seems to want this to come back to council because you have the legal responsibility for such easements. That's fine by me. I only put this in so that you would not clutter your agenda with all sorts of easements that we are asking for. Um, so that's, that's fine. We can change that. Newly discovered lines will become part of the PWSA system. Our map is not adequate. We don't know where every line is. And so as we discover new lines, we will just add them to the inventory of lines that exist. Any property abandoned by the PWSA before September 2025 will revert to city ownership. This means that if we move out of a place like the Strip District where we have uh, a lot of our cars parked and uh, use it as a uh, parking facility. Um, before that time, that land goes back to the city. We don't intend to keep it under a lease agreement, and you can do with it what you please. Um, 
PWSA assumes responsibility for sawmill run projects. You may have thought we did this all along, and in fact we do, but under the old co-op agreement, we were forbidden to do it. And so we shouldn't have been doing any of it for the life of the uh, PWSA as we know it. And all of those things in Sawmill Run are mutual municipality agreements, sometimes with the Army Corps of Engineers. We would be responsible for doing all of that, just like we actually are now, but we would legally get the responsibility for it. Uh, P PA Public Utility Code prevails in the case of conflicts. Yes, it does, unfortunately. That's the way it is. That's the state law. Nothing we can do about that. Although we would be happy to challenge with you if there were items that we felt we could mutually win on. And the 90-day termination provision by either party continues as it did in the old agreement. That's how we got to this stage. Those are the major items that are contained in the agreement. There are a few others that are listed on your blue sheet, on your summary sheet, which may come up during the course of this discussion but I would welcome any questions or discussion that anybody may have. Yeah, um, so in terms of presentation, you feel you're complete, that it would be okay to open up? As complete as I'm gonna get, as thank you. As you're gonna, you've always been complete, Paul. So with that then, I am gonna start with our uh, representative on the PWSA board, Councilwoman Gross, you have the floor. I assume that uh, City, <coughs> City Controller Michael Lamb would have a, some opening words as well to you. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to. I, I actually have a lot more probably questions than um, than remarks uh, at this point. I've uh, yet to see the actual agreement, so I'm just going by what I've read and with the summary that's been provided today. And as you know, the devil's in the details on a lot of these things. So I would just um, caution uh, some of the things. Let me just, just on, on what's been presented so far and, and some of the things I'll, I'll, I'll talk about. But first... As you know, I've been pretty critical of this organization for a long time, uh, going back to the, the finance deal in 20, 2007, which was probably the, one of the biggest mistakes uh, in a long history of mistakes. <laughs> that was one of the worst. Uh, entering into that swap deal back in 2007 um, has crippled this uh, authority for a long time um, financially, um, and it's really left the management, whoever the management was, with um, fewer choices as to what we could do to move the authority forward. Um, and so we're 15 years, no, 12 years down the road from there, and um, we're still dealing with the uh, problems of that deal. And um, some of it has been wound down, and, and uh, the authority's doing a pretty good job now of, of correcting uh, the rest of it. But let me just say this, that um, my, my criticism of this organization has always come back to one simple thought, and it was the inconsistency of leadership. Uh, the fact that as we changed management over the last 10 years, five times? Um, six. Uh, not that, six, not that, not that um, any of those decisions were bad decisions, but every time you bring in someone new, they have a different way of thinking. And rather than having us committed to a long-term plan, that a new executive director could follow, we were always developing new long-term plans or new ways of getting to, to the long-term plan. That's different now, and that's a really good thing. Um, we, we now have and are following a long-term plan. I, I commend the staff and the board down there for that. Um, so now, as we move forward, it's a much more positive situation. Um, you see it in the improvements uh, just in the infrastructure improvements that are going on. You even see it into one of the things that we complain a lot about is the customer service down there has improved. Um, we tested it, as you know, in our last audit, and, um, and, we, and we're seeing improvement already from that. So, so I, I'm, I'm encouraged by um, what's happened to this point. I'm encouraged by what I see today. Um, I have questions, like I'm sure all of you do, um, but I'm, I'm encouraged that we're making these uh, steps. I agree with Paul that, you know, this co-op agreement started in 94 because we basically needed to bail out the city. <laughs> that's, that's what it was. This was not some straight, uh, you know, bona fide purchase uh, or, or, or negotiation. This was a bailout and we basically moved burden, financial burden from the city to the Water and Sewer Authority. And that's what was done. Uh, and so now it's time to correct that. The city has come out of Act 47. Uh, we are in a much stronger position than we were, and it's time 
to start correcting these things. Um, I'm a little concerned about the subsidy uh, because while the subsidy doesn't mean anything today because we've raised our rates to be pretty much consistent with Pennsylvania American, that's not going to happen for long. Pennsylvania Americans already put in for rate increases again, so we're going to have to revisit that subsidy. And, and the subsidy is an issue of, of fairness mm. and to me. And, and to me, it's, it's, it's two things. It's a financial issue, obviously. But, but maybe what's even more important is the quality of the water issue. Um, Pennsylvania American water is not as good as PWSA's water. That's a fact, okay? And, and, it's, and it, it's mainly because of where they draw their water from. Mm -hmm. They draw their water from the Mon. PWSA draws their Mon water from the Allegheny. It's cleaner. Um, and so people who live in areas serviced by Pennsylvania American are first paying more, or will be when the rates go up again, um, and at, for, for lower quality water. So to me, the discussion shouldn't just be about the subsidy and the equity. It should be about whether or not those customers shouldn't be customers of PWSA. Now, I know that's a big fight, and I know that's, a, that's something that we probably don't want to talk about today. But long term, we've got to be thinking about that. And now that we are a PUC regulated uh, um, organization or utility, um, I think that's the place where you start that kind of conversation. Uh, and, and we should be thinking about approaching them in a way that makes PWSA the water provider for not just the current customers, but for all customers at the city of Pittsburgh. So. Michael, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your comments about existing leadership in the authority. I, I agree with you, and I thank you for bringing that to light. Councilwoman Gross, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, thank you all for being here to answer these questions. This is really information gathering for the public and for council members. So um, it, it, it's, I think, important for us to take some time so that we can all be educated on the ton of technicalities here. So. Um, uh, Chairman Leger, your your presentation was definitely appreciated. Council members do have copies of the agreement and um, a blue sheet, um, Controller Lamb, that I have an extra copy of that I'm happy to pass. I, I you have, have the blue yeah, sheet. I don't have the um, and if maybe the clerk's office wants to make a copy of the original um, co-op agreement, that would be appreciated as well. I mean, I've got, I don't know, people in the, in the audience may have an extra copy or Mr. Gitlin does, thank you. I apologize for that. Uh, if I would have happily provided one if I'd known. Um, so I've been asked uh, some questions by media and by citizens over the last couple of weeks since we first have been talking about this both at the PWSA board and here at council. Um, and one of my initial responses, I think, was captured in, in both the controller and the chairman's comments, which is that it's better for all of us, especially for our citizens and our neighbors, if this is better accounted for, right? So these sets of informal agreements that have been had over the number of years, and, and Mr. Legger, you cited a few of them. Well, a $7 million check is written for this with no receipt or accounting, and a $4 million check is going this way for something else, and we're not sure all of what it is. And um, this is the opportunity to make sure that we are doing all of the accounting so that things are fully accounted for and you know where they're paid for so that they do get paid for or they don't get paid for twice. You always want the books to be really good. And this is, I think, an opportunity for us to make sure that we're doing that. It may be that if we do the best that we can today and after we keep track for a number of years, we realize, you know what, that wasn't quite fair on this side or that side. Uh, but having said that, both sides only have one source of funds, and that is the citizen of, the, of Pittsburgh. So um, when asked, what about the water for the swimming pools? So the water will be in the swimming pools. It just will be, are you paying for it at, on your water bill or on the city taxes, right? One of those two is going to make sure that the water is in the swimming pool. So it's not that things aren't going to get done. Um, it's just that they're going to be way better accounted for. Um, having said that, I do have a few of the of clarifications, I think, and questions and follow-up on things, especially around um, the pension items that you mentioned, Mr. Legger. Um, so maybe you could just speak a little bit more to... Uh, how right now 
the city, I think you said, is paying $4.9 million for PWSA employees' pension funds. That's correct, and you have paid for them since the PWSA was severed from the city. Yeah, and just as a reminder to the listener at home that it was a, the city's water department. It was actually a city department, just like parks is still a department and um, police is still a department, and so there was a department of water. Um, and so those couple of hundred employees, I'm assuming at the time, we have about 300 employees in-house now, um, went one day from being city of Pittsburgh employees to being employees of this newly created um, water and sewer authority sometime in 1995. That's correct, and they remained in the city's municipal pension plan. Right. However, when you gave up the 50% offset for Social Security, they all got the benefit of that, and they kept the benefit of that even when it was put back on by Act 47, so that the people working at the authority have no offset, whereas your municipal employees do, uh, but we never paid you a cent for any pension obligation, and the city has paid the MMO for pension, it has paid additional money, and it has paid additional money on top of that into the city pension plan to keep it above 50%. So We know you, we owe you at least 4.9 million, and if it's more than that, it is whatever it is. Uh, we went to the um, uh, actuaries, and we had them tell us how much our employees cost your plan, they told us, and that's the number they gave us. Uh, if it's more than that, we pay you whatever the actuaries tell us it is. Uh, I'm going to let council, or the city controller. I, I, would, I would just me. add to that, for that entire period of time, because our Act 205 funding is based on the number of units within your organization, those units weren't counted in the Act 205 uh, money that we get from the state. So we, we should have been getting more money from the state as well over that period of time, but that what those those units weren't were disallowed. So okay, so that's an interesting side note. I just want to say that in this kind of like accounting, and I do feel like the the administration both here it was the mayor's office that negotiated with two board members. I was not included. Yes, it was Jim Turner mm -hmm. and me and Dan Gilman. So as executive committee members of the PWSA board, these and were the kind of the, the draft that we got to. I only saw when other council members saw it. Margaret Lanier is also a member of the executive committee, but was not part of the negotiation because she's on both ends. She's on the she's the city revenue person, and she is also the PWSA board member. So she was exempted from the agony of negotiating this right. agreement. So there's been, I think, a good faith effort on both sides. It looks to me to kind of weigh, like, well, okay, that's true. Um, you know, the city has been paying all of these pension contributions that it wasn't really documented mm -hmm. that they had to. On the other hand, PwC has been writing a seven million dollar check for, with no receipt, with no reason, you know, with nothing to account no for it as well. Issues. No item my receipt. So there has been this very loosey goosey, I want to say, informal balance that it may be out of balance now as to seek to clarify not only that things are getting paid for, as I said in my opening comments, but also that things get done. Right, and we all have as council members calls to our offices about things that aren't getting done and who is supposed to do them. So in all cases that we have cooperation agreements, it's literally a daily operating manual on a daily basis, how the city is to operate by who does what and not just who is getting paid for what. So I just wanted to kind of get that out there. Um, having said that, back to the pension topic, um, which authorities pay uh, payroll tax to the city, Councilman, or Chairman Leger, as None a former finance director. Of. I don't know whether the URA does or not. I don't um, think so. Mr. Gitling, do you know, happen to know offhand if the I URA or a city controller, do you know if the URA pays payroll tax? So we are assuming here that no authorities of the city of Pittsburgh, all of which have employees, each and every city authority has employees. And we believe that none of them pay payroll tax to the city mm -hmm. on those employees. And we did that as a good faith effort to act like a, a, the rest of the utilities. Um, we figured that that would be about $110,000 a year. There is also a voluntary PERTA payment 
with which is the substitute by utilities for property tax. I'll get to that next, but can I just pursue this for a minute? So why do people pay, who, why, why would any city authority not pay payroll tax? Why do none of the authorities exempt. pay payroll tax? They're exempt like from government a non, units. Yeah, so it's like they are a kind of mini government unit. Yes. They're actually called subunits. In, in the same way that the I county think. doesn't pay it or the federal government doesn't pay it. Right. I'm not sure. Is that right? That's right. So the Army Corps of Engineers office down the street on Grant Street. I don't, I don't know street, about the Army Corps of Engineers. Do they pay payroll tax? The federal, so. the U.S. Senate employees no. across the street here on Grant Street who work for Senator Casey, there's no payroll tax paid to the city no. of Pittsburgh on their payroll. No. Um, the, only, the only tax they would pay, units? the only tax they would pay would be the taxes that the employees pay, which would be the wage tax if they live in the city and the $52, the local services tax of okay. working here in the city. Thank you. And currently, do other authorities pay that, those as well, the $52? The employees do. The employees okay. pay them. Yep. And our employees pay those too. Okay, good. So as a governmental subunit, there is no payroll tax. Right. PERDA as well. Can you explain what that acronym is? PERDA is the Public Utility um, Real Estate tax I think that's what it is um, and it is a way for public utilities to pay their real estate tax to the state and the state redistributes it so every municipality gets some this was done because not every municipality has a power plant or a gas generation plant and because some of them were left out and some of them would become millionaires if they had a nuclear plant and they were tiny then uh, the state redistributes that income. What municipality is Three Mile Island in? <laughs> I, I think it's Coriopolis, but I'm not sure. No, no, no. Three Mile Island? Three Mile Island is by Harrisburg, right? Yeah, I don't know if it's technically the city of Harrisburg or whatever. So there's but, some but, small municipality, which is that place where a large footprint large utility are, is. Are located, right. And so instead of paying their pay, they pay payroll tax because they're a yes. private corporation. If they're in the city. Um, so a private corporation pays payroll tax, but it does it bypasses its city, goes to the state, and then gets evenly redistributed. Do I understand that correctly? There's a formula which is so complicated, even I don't understand okay. it. So Alcasan pays that? Yes. I, th I don't think Alcasan pays it. No, because I don't know what Alcasan because pays. Because they're a I government don't... subunit. Yes, because they're, they're a an government authority. subunit. Okay, so again, authorities do not pay property tax to the state. That's correct because they're tax exempt. All right. Good. And we can't think of one that would in the city of Pittsburgh. Do we have private corporations that own utilities yes. that own properties? Can, they all as, pay PERDA. Such as? People's gas. Uh, so like on their gas. office building or, I mean, they don't really Anything have a facility, they, um, right? Uh, I guess substations or something like that, yes. right? Right, so like Duquesne Light has that substation in your neighborhood. It's actually private property because they're a private corporation, right. but they're a utility, so they're paying the property tax state. Okay, I think I follow that. Uh, but we're very, we're all very clear that authorities do not pay either one of those taxes. Correct. Because they're government subunits, and yet there's a proposal in this co-op agreement. That That's why it says it's voluntary. Them. All right, so I'm going to probably have a lot more questions not today about that issue and I understand again the spirit of the of the negotiations was to kind of say like well there's a, 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 a informal little bit sloppy balance between these payments now and to try to get back to that balance maybe there was some like well we'll add this in here we'll add this one in there um, but there may be lines that should be respected for, for and other the reasons. PUC has final say in the agreement so they may mm -hmm. say what they say too okay that's interesting um, I'm going to switch topics entirely, and I'm going to try to. I'm saving time here. We have 20 minutes, and I want to respect members. We try to keep these things to an hour generally. Um, that is about um, the easements, because we were both, I think there were several members that were concerned about that. And so um, there's, there's several things about that that, as you mentioned in your presentation, currently, if. Um, if anyone is to be granted rights to city property, which is what an easement is. Did I say that in a, a, kind so. of a legal way, right? Um, rights of access, um, especially when there's underground equipment. It's city property and it's this table that is, and the people are the owners of city property. And so you need permission from the owners. 
You don't get to go onto your neighbor's yard and dig under it <laughs> without an easement. You can't use your neighbor's driveway unless they give you an easement, right? You can't have a, a cut through or something like that. Um, and so people, that's generally what easements are, are um, intended for or frequently used for. And so similarly, um, in having some kind of access to the people's property, you get permission from the people. Um, and so that's why I give pause to this notion that there's a clause in here that says like, no, nobody has to ask for permission um, to the people's representatives. And I, I, have, I have some problem with that as well, and I probably will have further questions. Let me explain how that would work. First of all, that would only be for easements that PWSA seeks. Most of our work is done by contractors, and they already get those easements. So they get the easements, they pay the fees associated with it. It wouldn't be as many as we think. But it was simply an attempt to keep paperwork to a minimum. If you want to issue easements as is your legal authority, that's fine by us. Um, and let me, I'll, I'll wrap up. I want to give other members uh, ample opportunity and if there's extra time. But I just want to wrap up by saying I think everybody will cheer to know who should be sweeping their street and cleaning out their catch basins, right? I know, I will. And there will be only <laughs> one place that you should go to to let them know about the garbage and the debris that's piled up. We were just talking about one minutes ago today. Um, so I'm, I'm fully supportive there. And I think it's right and just and good that all city facilities should be metered and that the people should know. And it will make us all more conscientious about, about water usage. As I keep pointing out also to the media, I don't see any low flow toilets in the women's bathroom over here on at city council. Um, and this building is not metered. We have abs we can't do better unless we know how much water we used yesterday. There's no way there's no way of knowing that we're doing better today. So I'm fully supportive there. Thank you. And I'll see the floor. Thanks. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman, can I add one yes, comment please. to that? And that mm -hmm. is, what you say is very true on the conservation issue. I think paying for water will get the city's attention. Let's sit in, up a lot straighter. It, on, uh, on conservation in a way that nothing else could. And in fact, the mayor's con, um, sustainability okay. staff has been looking at that issue for a long time. And so this will be a good step forward. I'm fully supportive, and we'll do what I can on both ends. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I think the city controller needs it. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Kale Smith. More papers. We're talking about the <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. We're talking um, about so I just want to say I think we have PwC has come a long way since I remember I heard the controller say it was 2007 that he um, had some questions well, for me I wasn't elected till 2009 and it was shortly after that um, someone from Councilman Krause's district I call her Aaron Brockovich of Pittsburgh um, came to me and started complaining about PwSA meters, PwSA billing, PwS, which later led to the PwS, the post agenda where PwSA lead came out. And so I feel like every time I turn around, there's been an issue with PwSA. And I've had a lot of concerns. I didn't vote for any of the current board members. I'm looking at the board now, sitting in the audience, looking so happy to be here. But I do want to say that I think that they um, are an amazing group of people um, that you have on there. So I, I will say that. Some of the people I respected the most over the city in the city of Pittsburgh, even you, Director Lager. Oh, so, thank you. <laughs> even you, I said, see. <laughs> Seriously, but I really think that there's a lot going on um, and a lot of change, and I do appreciate it. But there were some comments, you know, um, with the PwSA and the um, uh, PA American. And I just want to say for us, one of the reasons we like PA American is maybe you can't really tell so much the difference in the water, but it is the customer service that you receive from PA American. In the 10 years I've been in office, I've had three complaints of PA American, and I can't tell you the amount of calls I've had for P PwSA. They have been endless. So if you ask the residents of southwest of the city of Pittsburgh who they'd rather have, it would be PA American hands down because they like the customer service that they that they receive. And if they're going to pay the same for the service or for the water anyway, or around the same, the offset doesn't really matter that much because it's going to, um, it's, it, it will make up the difference in the, with the aggravation you have to put up with. And so for me, part of that aggravation has been the six-year process that we've had at Banksville, in Banksville, which we have now one in Banksville, on Banksville Road, so it's another area in Banksville. And I, you know, I know that this, this is about the agreement and not necessarily about stormwater management, but it speaks to the leadership 
a PWSA and the way that issues are handled. And when you talk about consistency, I don't want consistency in what we've received this past week. I don't want consistency in what this residents of Banksville has, have received for the past six years. They are frustrated on Red Oak and Hasten and the flooding that has occurred there. And I was one of those people that fought for a green infrastructure project. I took it to the Alcasan board that we should have more green infrastructure project. I fought for this area to have green infrastructure. And sometimes you have to admit when it's not working and we're in gray infrastructure makes more sense. The residents of Red Oak and Hasten have had it. They have been flooded. They are at their wits end every time it rains, even a small amount of rain. And we have done a lot of work, PWSA has done a lot of work up there, but none of which has led to a remedy for these residents. I mean, as recently as this week being flooded with sewage in their, raw sewage in their ba in some of their basements and the most beautiful homes, including the U.S. Attorney General mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm sorry, an employee of his office that had his car there one day when it was flooded. And so there's a lot of people watching what's happening on Red Oak and Hasten and not appreciating it. There's a lot of businesses on Banksville Road who are saying that we need to look at the Motel 6 and the pipes underground. Then they were doing construction there and they were doing construction without without permits, and they're saying that a pipe may be broken there. There's also the work that was done, the green infrastructure project that further down on Banksville Road, which was a PWSA project, and now Banksville Road has, been, has experienced a tremendous amount of flooding. So somebody has got to look beyond just the green infrastructure project and see, are there broken pipes? Is there something that has gone wrong? And listen to what the residents are saying. Don't come in and give them some condescending attitude, some condescending tone, and some bunch of excuses, or, you know, we can help you here, but we may not be able to help you down the road, or we can't stop flooding indefinitely. They need answers, and they need a response, and they, need it, they needed it five years ago, but they definitely need it now. And so when you talk about an agreement, I'm going to say we hold this agreement until I have some solution for the residents of Banksville, because I'm, and the, there, we have flooding all over our area, but th this is stuff that we have done that have caused these people to um, really not even be able to enjoy their homes. I mean, it's terrible when one of, and these are some, most of these people are, are city workers, people that save lives every day for people. There's, you know, a medic, there's a DPW guy, there, this, one of the assistant directors of um, DPW lives on that same street further down where he's not being flooded. But, um, and I want to say, Dan Gilman is supposed to be on vacation, had it not been for him over this weekend, I don't know, and Councilman Gross, um, who I had to call to get help for the residents of Banksville to get raw sewage cleaned out of their homes over the weekend. I don't know what we would have done because nobody was coming. You have two people to clean up raw sewage or to clean up after a storm in the entire city of Pittsburgh. Two. There should be contractors that, like we do have when an emergency on call. So God forbid you need somebody, they're there. But residents shouldn't have to worry about how, who's coming to clean, especially given that this has been six years. We should know what to expect in Banksville. We should have a plan in place already to prevent this or to respond immediately afterwards. So when you talk about leadership, I want to know what you're going to do when it comes to stormwater management. But overall, when residents have concerns, I think you need to have somebody who can communicate better to residents. I mean, one of the residents were told, can't the other residents help clean up the raw sewage? I have it in writing. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable what I've seen over this weekend. So you know, not only are they being victimized over and over again from, from the storms and, and for everything, but from PWSA and the way that you respond and the way there, I mean, there's not one of them that isn't upset. So I just want to say right now, that's going to be an issue for me when it comes time for this vote. And um, I do want to thank Councilwoman Gross, Council, uh, um, Chief of Staff Gilman and Grant Gitlin for responding and helping the residents this weekend, but um, I have a lot of concerns still. And when we talk about the subsidy, um, you know, I do think that it may even out in the end. But there's definitely the, our residents definitely want customer service. They that is the one key, and I want to know what the can anybody talk to that and what your plans are for that area and what you'll do um, to address that because there has been nine. There's just not a clear, consistent answer. I mean, a response from PwC. You can't say that okay, so and so is going to call, and this is what we're going to have done, and you know they know it's going to flood, so they're going to come out and put the sandbag. I mean, I had to remind you to put sandbags out for these people. I said it's going to it's going to storm. They they get flooded. Please put sandbags out. And then when they'd ask for sandbags, you asked like they were asking for gold, it, it, like you didn't want to give it to them. I mean, it, it was it is it's inexcusable. It's inhumane. And honest to goodness, I mean, it sounds criminal to me the way they've been treated. It really does. As a matter of fact, they called the DEP and uh, the Attorney General on this whole issue, and I know that. And the 
attorney general is already obviously involved. But um, there, I want to know how this is how you're going to handle not just in this area in this case, in, but in other areas as well. And um, can somebody talk to any part of this? Bob can talk about the uh, <clears throat> specific capital plans <clears throat> in a minute. But I would start by saying that. I think we have been recalcitrant in those areas. Um, and if I lived there, I would be at your podium every week screaming and yelling about water coming into my garage or my basement. I understand that problem absolutely. That's not acceptable. Um, but I would also remind you that part of that problem is that the street needs to be lowered and come into compliance. And so with, we're doing that. So let me say that part. Domi is doing that part. Domi has been. But it isn't done yet. And so when that's done, on. that may help. Yeah. So they started working on it. But I think you need to look at the curb. They, I mean, just if you look at their, their concerns and questions, and I think I'm going to start having them copy the board members so that you are more aware. I tried to not drag everybody into the middle of everything, but I, I've been talking to Councilwoman Gross. But I think that overall people need to look at that, at the whole Response and what the residents are saying. These are not stupid people. I mean, they're some of the most brightest people. I mean, I don't know if you know Timmy Nutter, I don't know if you know Bernadette Hughes, who teaches at a Pioneer School and is well respected in that community and um, in the disability community. And so I'll just say they're, they're people that know a lot and that they have, they're documenting everything, they're, they're looking up things, they're doing their research. Mm -hmm. um, they're just really mm -hmm. frustrated about the, the response, and so am I. Otherwise, I wouldn't bring it up during this meeting, but I have been talking about this and been asking for help and been making phone calls. Uh, I've talked to your leadership. I've talked to different folks, and I want to say some of the people you have responding are some of the nicest people in the world. I mean, they're really nice, but it's not their responsibility to okay. When you have some, when somebody doesn't know whether they'll be able to stay in their home, they have raw sewage, and some, somebody can't, say, authorize um, a hotel stay. <clears throat> Or you don't have a, a, you know, additional contractors, B contractors on, on standby for mm -hmm. emergencies, and somebody can't authorize that or say, okay, yes, somebody's coming in, hang tight, we'll be there. We know this is a problem, we we're already ready. When you don't have those people that can, it's unfair to even put those people responding in the position they're in to respond when you didn't give them any authority to do anything. Mm -hmm. And so I, so, I mean, I think the residents get frustrated with them, but it's not even their fault. I mean, they really are trying their best to respond to people. But you've given them nothing to help people with. As one who has had the experience of sewage backups in my basement, I know exactly what they are up against, and I know how disgusting it is to have to clean that up and take care of it and back into that whole problem. Um, and it, it's something I think Maybe that... Maybe you should have the communication job. It sounds like you're pretty no, good. No, 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 I don't think so. <laughs> I retired, remember? Yeah. Um, it, it really is a, a serious problem. I'm not minimizing it. And I think that we would be happy to meet with those residents, to meet with you and those residents, anybody else that we can put I mean, together. Do you realize how many times they've met over the past six years? It's been many times. Many broken promises, many failed attempts to do something, and yet, I mean, these people, they, they're ready to sell their homes and, and, and up and mm -hmm. move because... It, to the to PWSA, which they still have a waiting res response for those things, emails that they sent, and haven't received one, even though we said to send them to them. And they're, they're just frustrated. And I know you're all frustrated with their tweeting and posting, and but that's all, that's the only resort that they too. have. That's all they have left. That's the only way, thing they have left. And so I'm just, I'm frustrated for those residents and, and you know, a lot of our residents and, and just, uh, you know, and I, I said I've been finding this issue for a long time with PwSA, and I actually get really offended when I hear people using politics, you know, our water for politics and PwSA. I get really offended because there's a lot of people that you know came out and started attacking PwSA that had nothing to do with it when we tried telling people what was going on there. I have emails from elected officials that didn't even care, didn't want to have anything to do with it, or didn't even respond to stuff when I was saying we need help with PwSA. Not you know, then all of a sudden it became an issue that the public cared about, and everybody all of a sudden was jumping on the bandwagon to fight the fight and you know use use and exploit you know, a bad situation. So it bothered me. I didn't want, so I was trying to very, to not be that person. I wanted to make sure that we were getting real results. So on to other subjects. I wanna know uh, the tap-ins and, and the fees for um, the zoo and other places that you may you know, eventually want to charge. Would you, there be a sliding scale for any of those things? Because we have small businesses paying the same prices as you know, larger businesses and things like that. So I wonder if there's any uh, plans for sliding scales, for f sliding fees for those things. Right now the, PW, the PUC has two classes of 
charges. One is residential and one is commercial. Um, we would be happy to go to the PUC to get other classes created. My favorite, the one I would like to create, is a government class because mm -hmm. people that are paying our rates are also paying taxes. They're the same people. And so if we could get a government rate for utilities, we would be in a much better shape um, financially than we are now. And the taxpayers would be in a better shape. Um, but right now we're stuck with those two classifications and there's nothing we can do about that. So uh, if there's some way we can help with that, I'd like to help with that. And I, I'm gonna end it with, um, you know, with, well, with the varying rates, I'd, we'd like to be able to help with any of that. And the other thing is um, the green infrastructure. As, as much as I am supportive of green infrastructure, I want us to know and realize sometimes uh, when gray infrastructure is also makes sense and you have to either combine the two or, um, or forego the green infrastructure for the gray infrastructure for what, what works. Um, and I'll end it with, I really want something done with the communications and making sure that you're adding more money to that department and, and doing more to be responsive to the people. Um, and we have some of the most amazing people in that department. I want to say that. Some really good people, but give them the tools to, to do what they need to do. That's it for me right for the moment. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So I took Councilwoman Kel Smith next because she raised her hand. Are there hands or do you want me just to continue down the line? Either way works for me. Okay, so then we'll just take Good Councilwoman best. Harris uh, next and appreciate members being respectful of everyone's time. And so Councilwoman uh, Harris. Okay. Uh, I loved drinking. We know you, you do. You heard it here <laughs> And that explains everything. E-W-S-A water. You heard it here first. E -W -S -A we can end the meeting. Water. Okay. Headline, where's the post that Aren't they in the room? E-W-S-A water. Councilwoman drinking. I can tell the difference between America and you blindfold me. Like people, Coke and Pepsi. I can tell the difference. And then one day over politics, we get fire half the top of it. We lose our uh, uh, Stanley um, chemist. Mm -hmm. And uh, we think we're really cool when we hire one of the guys that we should have never hired in the first place. And they decide they're going to put. We'll copy this. Um, a chemical in which I read up on that took all of the garbage off the sides, including soft lead lines. This is where the first time we started hearing about the lead in the water. And first we were gonna do pipes and we got down to doing a pitcher. And to this day, I don't have a glass of PWSA water. I think somewhere in this guarantee, we need it to say that we will have clean water, lead-free, all that other garbage and the gook you just put in there to try to plaster everything back on the sides again. I don't know how that's going to work, but. I'm disturbed because I can't drink it. I'm not a pop drinker. I was a I was a water drinker and a PWSA water drinker. So I think that is one thing that needs to be in the cooperation agreement. And I think you need to put out the testing also and show the public what it really is. When we get our bills, you just throw that right in there with it. I don't think we should be subsidizing anyone. I think it is totally unfair of those of us that do. Uh, paying for water and, I don't know. You're also talking Elkacian, correct? In what sense? Well, Elkacian is in here. Paying for Elkacian, yes. Okay. So, there are so many municipalities that are coming in through the city that if that's what you would like us to do, then I think you need to go to the state and federal government and tell them that the city of Pittsburgh should have a user fee 
on our pipes in the city of Pittsburgh. It is not fair. We are paying user fees to dump our garbage, not just to the municipality, but to the school districts outside the city. So why shouldn't these municipalities, which are using our storage, have to pay a user fee for the pipes? Because that's wear and tear. That's more wear and tear on all the pipes. I mean, just go out and look at those huge ones at Washington Boulevard. And I'm sure there, I know there's some behind Hines and other places in the city, but um, that needs to be done, I think, first. Um, as, as far as you want us to pay for the water, I want you to pay to dig up our street. It's our street, and I had, if you remember, a piece of legislation for those of you that were around here, uh, then, uh, because of the poor patches that we've had in the street, uh, it had destroyed um, our streets, and we had to do them sooner instead of later. So that's that's another thing. Oh, and I don't. I I just asked before and publicly. I I want to ask for a copy of the cooperation agreement that's on right now. And I'm sure we're going to have to extend something until we get through this. Um, but uh, I think city council should, should approve any easements. Because who knows where you're going to be asking for an easement. Um, that's not just for... PWSA, but that's also for American Water. I mean, it all should be the same. Uh, and are there no offsets? Because I thought everyone that that were residents is it just residents of the city? that we are paying for uh, onto their um, uh, pension. No, it's all employees. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, they're not they're not showing an offset or anything, correct? And it's illegal anyhow, so sooner or later it's going to have to come off. Uh, but those are some things that I think have to be looked at. Uh, I didn't have time to think about it when I when I first talked to Jim. I trust you and Jim very well. I, I think you're great. Uh, nice addition compared to what we had and what was happening, but that all happened political. I can always tell where somebody lives when she says. And we're paying for it right now. Uh, but if we're talking about charging for water, now here's the other thing. Up until now, PWSA are the ones I understand from the firefighters, because the firefighters used to check all the fire hydrants to see if they were working. Okay, my understanding is it's PWSA that's supposed to be checking the fire hydrants. Yes? We do a certain percentage each year, yes. Okay, how long does it take you to get around to Somewhere in the neighborhood of five to six years. So we're doing about 20% of them a year. Have you done a north side yet? I can't, I can't answer which hydrants One on my done. screen was done, I know that. <clears throat> okay. This year we've probably done more because of the flushing program that we've had in, in place for the last four months. Okay. 
because uh, when we had the cave in, and this is one example, I'll lo you lose List and Schnicken. Uh, the fire hydrant was not working at List. Fire hydrant was not working at Schnicken. It came up on Buenny, and the fire hydrant wasn't working up there. The next fire hydrants were over the hill. That's a problem. Under the PUC, we now have a responsibility to do a certain amount of work, including hydrant operation, valve operation, and the like. These are programs that did not exist. We're not being, we were not being held accountable. Now we are. So we have to do it, and we will report it to the public. And a lot happened in those few years that has really hurt the PWSA, uh, hurt the city, and um, I don't know. I think we have to look at this a little closer, maybe. Michael, have you been a part of this at all? Okay. Okay. Anybody from Council Deb? Have you been a part of putting this together? No, I already said so in my comments. That I'm I was sorry. At the I table, didn't. I got it at the same time as other members did. Okay. So it was Director Lager, it was Chairman Lager, and um, Board Director Jim Turner, and members of the mayor's office. And I'm not sure on the mayor's side if that was right. Without city council member. Correct. That's not right. If I may, I will say that three weeks ago, when the, or so, when the legislation was submitted, we sent the co op agreement. Mm -hmm. We've extended invites to all members and had many of them, and continue to have an open invitation. Uh, to take any feedback on how the agreement needs to be adjusted, so. But Deb that, is a member the, on the council. Yeah, understood. Okay, and I think our controller should be part of it too. Um, and then you can still invite us. Uh, but those are just some of what I see, and Alcasan is a real big one, and I know you're writing down um, but I think we really have to get some of this straightened out before, you know, we can say, okay, the city's not getting 7.1 million. Um, maybe the city should be getting more than 7.1 million. And I think if we start looking at you know, what the costs are. And maybe look at that legislation when everybody came in and like, man, I had people's gas there, I had equitable gas there, I had Duquesne Light, I had PWSA there when we were gonna charge for opening and closing the streets. So, um, I mean, we have to look and what will hurt the city because this is once once we get this all in gear here once it's done it's done they don't want for a while well it says you know at the end here there's a 90-day written notice um but still i i really think, I think that's better we have to look it's, at it's, what the city has and what we what we have to spend money on, and in order to get the your pipes, you have to go through our streets. Capish. Okay, and I look forward to talking to you maybe again about this, um, or Deb. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Strasburg. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here today. Um, I really appreciate the, the overview and the recap of what this all uh, includes. And you know, I've read through the agreement, and this is just a, a helpful reminder of the key points. Um, 
Just for those who are here today and those watching at home, I want to ask about this in context, in a larger context. So this is a co-op agreement, but it, and it is not a lot of other things. What are the other agreements that might be coming down the pike later on so that people understand what this is and what this isn't? I don't have expectations of any other agreements coming down the pike, but um, there, there is, there is a, there's an agreement with the city about stormwater management. Mm -hmm. That is an MOU between DOMI and us at the PWSA. Um, that might be managed differently. That is up to the mayor's office and you mm -hmm. as to how that's to be managed. But um, we have certain basic documents that govern the institution. One is the capital lease. The other is the Articles of Incorporation. And those are the basic documents that govern the organization. None of the other two documents that I mentioned, I don't expect to be, be coming before this organization. I would just add to that in addressing something that Councilwoman Harris had mentioned. There is the trunk line agreement with Alcasan that is still not agreed to. Um, so that's, that's out there. Mm -hmm. So if people have questions about um, you know, s sewer agreements or how we handle stormwater, that doesn't really belong in here. That belongs in other agreements or other documents. Um, so just wanted to sort of clarify that and make sure people understand that this is about professionalizing the agreement, I think actually can. making a... Uh, just a point where I think I did clarify that during my comments. I just want to say that. Oh, no, I was, wasn't directed at you at all. No, I just want to make sure. Yeah, 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 no. I, this was directed more just for just general sense because I've heard from, from people who aren't on city council, just residents who are c confused a little bit about what this is and what this isn't. So um, uh, that, you know, this is taking an, something that was an agreement that was an agreement in name only maybe and really professionalizing it and making it true. So... Um, I think that's good. I also, to Councilwoman Harris's point, do want to mention that um, I, I was at the table. I was part of these conversations appointed by Council President Kraus to be a representative of council. Um, the decision was made to approach each council member individually and allow them to be briefed by those who were um, who were members of the the committee. So. Every single council member did get an invitation. I think majority did take uh, advantage of that. So um, just wanted to make sure that that was um, on the record. But I do appreciate, um, again, the recap, all the work that's gone into this. Um, I, I was there at the table. I was asking questions that, you know, that I had questions about when this was all happening. But uh, uh, um, I did not do it the bulk of the work by any means, and so I appreciate the work that's gone into this. Thank you. Good. Councilman O'Connor, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, so my questions are more budgeting and maintenance, I guess. Um, so we, because of the PUC, there's no municipal rate. You had mentioned that. That was one of my questions. Um, so the one that stands out to me is the parks. Um, so if I'm correct, there would be 138 parks that now we are going to maintain. Um, so my question to that, and I don't even know if you guys could answer this, this might even be a public works question. So if we are now maintaining the pipes under those parks, if something were to break, do we have the ability internally to fix that? And again, I don't even think that's a question for you, um, but that's gonna obviously bump up our costs because now we have to purchase certain equipment. So I guess the, the question that you probably can't answer, but maybe this is a better question for when it comes to standing committee for our budget offices what is that going to cost us in the long run um, right now it's easy you know you guys go in fix it and you know maybe the money's an even wash at the end of the day i don't know but i mean we're going to have to purchase new equipment which is going to raise uh, a huge red flag for us when we start looking at budgets because if this agreement goes into effect now how is this going to affect sort of our long-term five-year budget plan? Um, and so those are questions that I really have about how we're going to maintain a lot of this um, property that now we are uh, in charge of. Um, so that's something that we probably should have somebody from the budget here, or maybe Grant, you can get those questions answered for uh, prior to those uh, meetings. 
And then the one, the other question for uh, this would be when it comes to new cost as well. Um, if you, if I read this correct, and maybe I just read the wording a little bit wrong. Um, if there's property that you're going to now take over, um, with regards to people not paying bills, certain things like that, does that cost anything with title searches and backgrounds and liens on property? Are we going to work with the treasurer's office on things like that, or is that just going to remain the same? Let me answer your questions backwards. Okay. Uh, on liens and things like that, no, you're not affected at all. Okay. On issues like valuing property so that we can get a correct PERDA amount, um, the city and us have decided to split the cost of assessment of those properties. We don't know what that cost is, but we could certainly talk about how that's to be done in the future. Um, and as far as um, maintenance in parks is concerned, the Current agreement actually doesn't change as much as it sounds like because you actually do some work yourselves now. On, oh, we do. We do a lot things. of maintenance in the park. I'm just thinking, okay, now spray park besides the tap-in fee that you're waiving for five years. I understand. All of a sudden that breaks. But there's a second resolution that we can make of that, mm -hmm. and that is for us to do an operations and maintenance agreement with you that says we will do that work as mm -hmm. if we were a contractor of the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if you do it right, so then we would pay you. You would the pay bulk us, of that, right? Where right now we don't. Pretty so much. That, right. That's pretty much true. So either yes. way, there's a cost. There's that, a cost. That's what I. I that's what. And I it's was an unpredictable to cost that. because it depends right. on. Right. Tomorrow breaks. the swimming pools are fine, and then there's right. a storm, and then there's a and like earthquake Shelley Park or something. Shut down right now. Right. Yeah. Um, so that yeah, that's more on the cost of how that changes our five-year plan. There will be a budgetary program. impact, and that's what we are trying to forestall with this agreement is to give you the chance to get ready for that over a course of five years so that you can phase that in. Right. We're not interested in bankrupting the city. That doesn't do any of us any good. No. And that would put us right back to where we were before Act 47. That would be foolish on everybody's part. Yeah, and, and I, I think my questions are more towards our budget side to plan for this out in you know the near we'll future. We'll be happy to work with you to yeah. do any planning necessary. Yeah. And, it has and, implications for us too. Right. And and you guys did a, a good job on this agreement. And the only question that I had and you and I spoke before was trying to get a resolution from PWSA to strengthen the public ownership of the agreement. Right now it's uh, it's here somewhere, but it's just one little line. It so is one it, line. I, mean, I don't know what else to do about it, so I welcome any suggestions to change the language right. to make it stronger and more acceptable. I think that it, PWSA it, has done everything we can, including <laughs> signing the pledge as a board to keep this a public institution. To me, public means not owned by a private corporation ever. In fact, I had the gavel changed to say on the outside of the gavel, Pittsburgh Water, owned by and for the people of Pittsburgh. Right. Um, and so we're very serious about that. We, and there is no incentive at all for the PWSA to sell the organization. We wouldn't get anything out of it. Well, that's a separate subject. But, it is separate. But, but I would say, that's I think true. you mentioned we can't doing, get anything doing a stronger resolution on your part. That's fine. Um, that maybe council signs off on, something along those lines. If you lines, want to propose any language or if oh, yeah. anybody else wants to propose some language, I'd be happy to hear it. Oh, that'd be great, yeah. And um, that would help the general public as well. I think that's the biggest question we get is that, you know, you'd sign these agreements and it's not going to be public anymore. And then the last question that I had, now that you guys are open to doing something over there, which is great, and you said that before, you guys all have said that, so I just want to ask that question. Um, where are we, and I was stepping in and out um, on calls, but where are we with the governance that we talked about? It is about on your table. It has not been pulled to my knowledge. And yeah, so that there is a governance piece on the table. I am working on a separate governance piece with the Blue Ribbon panel, which may come back somewhere down the line, and anybody else who wants to propose anything can do that. Okay. Or nothing. Or nothing, yeah, that's why, I mean, it's going to and pretty soon here, so that's why I was just asking where that was. Does that die at the end of the year? It should, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for Thank being you. here.
Are Thank you good, you. Councilman? I am good. The board did not give you permission to do that. Okay. Councilman. No, uh, I'm doing it personally. It's not okay. the board. Uh, Councilman Coghill is going to have the floor. Thank you. Councilman Thank you. Coghill. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, full disclosure, you know, I've met with Aqua half a dozen times at least, okay? It's not because I'm for privatization. It's because I felt it a duty, you know? I mean, when this issue came up when I came into office, I thought, well, what if PWSA can't deliver clean water, yeah, you, you know? Please. So I thought, what does it hurt to look at companies and what they have to offer? I like Aqua, you know, I felt they were professional. I think, uh, you know, you'll hear a lot about uh, maybe their history, but every, who doesn't have some sort of history, flawed history in delivering water? So, so I like them. Uh, you know, if there were to be some sort of partnership, they would be my company of choice because they want it. Um, of course, we know they want it for profit, okay? There's no mistake in that, okay? Um, but just a couple of things I learned from them that I thought were stark differences is the amount of water that we lose in our underground pipes compared to what they lose. We, he, he gauged it at 40% PWSA loses versus their 20%. Now, I don't know if it's a matter of the infrastructure as, as to where they're at or just neglect over 50 years or so. Um, but you don't have to comment on it. I'm just, I'm just telling you what, what I noticed, two differences. The other thing was it's most likely you'll see their employees on a main water break if, if something goes wrong in the neighborhood, a 16-inch line breaks, um, as opposed to subcontractors. I, I know they use subcontractors as well. So those are a few things I like about private business. But why would we ever give up an asset like water? You know, I'm right with you. It doesn't make any sense unless we can't deliver clean water, okay? So I would much rather pay for good clean water, expensive clean water, than cheap, you know, um, contaminated water. That's, that's, that just doesn't cut it. And that, and that affects the whole city. Even though PWSA does not supply my district, uh, you know, it certainly affects the, the, the entire city if we have contaminated water and people, if we're the next Flint, Michigan, it does not bode well for whether it's attracting home buyers or businesses or anyway. I'll say this, so my confidence has increased greatly, okay, over the past year and a half. I knew nothing about PWSA coming in, okay? I didn't know about the, the management, I very little about the history, but in doing my homework, I'm becoming more and more confident, and probably mostly because of the energy you all have put into it, uh, and, and just the, my, my mindset as to, you know, what road do we go down from here? Privatization, I don't think is the answer necessarily, but, uh, but the most important thing is good clean water. As far as the co-op agreement goes, you know, it sounds like, uh, you know, the mayor's office and you're all in agreement with that and you worked it all out. I really don't, uh, you know, as long as everybody's good with that, I have no questions on that. Um, you know, I do have a question on the subsidy. I, I've not made a big deal of the subsidy lately, okay? At first it was a big deal because it was a big difference. It was a difference of $15, $16 per bill. Now it's kind of evened out. Um, when I hear other council members say it's not fair for, you know, the rest of the city to subsidize us, well, this was an agreement that was made 100 years ago. Uh, it's been we tried to be overturned once or twice and it's, it's not gonna happen, never did happen. We Turns out now it's just not that big a deal. Um, now, I mean, I don't know. I didn't. As first, I heard it. You know, Pan Americans want to raise their rates. I, I wasn't aware of that. But uh, so perhaps it will be a big deal and an issue with me in the future. But for right now, it's kind of mute. You know, I'm more interested in the like the operations. I guess you know when we have um, on a daily basis, how many crews do we have? PWSA employees out there, whether it's replacing lead pipelines or whatever else they might be doing. PWSA crews or total crews? PWSA. PWSA has about 10 or 11 10. crews. Yeah. Um, and they work in three primary areas. The first is uh, repairing service line breaks. Second is repairing water main breaks. And third is uh, doing the other inspections and fire hydrants and mm -hmm. valve uh, related work. We're in the process of increasing the staff and will in fact be moving. We've just uh, brought in new management into the field ops. Those field ops folks are going to move into more of the construction to try and reduce the amount of, of uh, uh, capital work done by uh, contractors. Also, uh, we will be 
uh, implementing a number of other larger, much larger projects. So some of our staff are going to end up being in the support role because of the amount of valve work and other things that are required for those big projects. Um, we expect to add additional staff uh, to deal with stormwater. Okay. Right now we have very few staff dealing with stormwater because we don't have a budget really for stormwater. Um, and as we move forward, we intend to add a substantial number of crews just to deal with the stormwater problem. Um, so the, uh, to answer your question, uh, generically, we are trying to increase the amount of work we're doing with our own crews. We are having some difficulty finding the staff we need to do that. Um, mm -hmm. That is probably one of the factors holding us back. But more importantly, we're going through a series of changes in the, in the management structure for field ops to actually increase the performance, increase the accountability, increase the, um, if you want to call it, production. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, you know, I, I, it's well known you um, hired a lot of our talented people from the city, which is great, you know, and that's administrative wise. Uh, but I was also glad to hear and find out that uh, some acquaintances of mine were hired as laborers, and I thought, well, that's, that's a good sign. I, I'd like to see a more of a field presence, I think, anybody. We're, we're either an authority or a company. You know, an authority really doesn't do much work, I feel, as far as having crews out there in the field, we're, other than hiring, you know, subcontracting. Um, and that's one of the differences between Pennsylvania, PA American and PWSA. I feel like they have much more you know, uh, employees actually out there in the field. And there's a disconnect, I think, when you line up, when you're dealing with five subcontractors and I'm looking out my window and I see this company name that I never heard of and, you know, I have to call that company and then they refer me to you. So I'm just glad to hear that you're hiring on those ends and trying to beef that up. Um, let me just ask you this. Uh, I, and, and it's obviously aqua and they want a piece of the water business because it's profitable. Is it profitable to us? Where, where are we? If we took the last six months, um, people paying their bills, I guess that's our source of income, versus what we put out there, not counting any debt we might pay off. Where, where are we? Are we, are we? Well, let's generically say that as a business, we have a positive cash flow. Right. We, are, we have been increasing our reserve funds to cover things like um, you know, debt coverage, um, right. non-payment of their uh, bills, that type of thing. Um, but most importantly, we're taking as much money as we can and putting it back into the system. Mm -hmm. So except for those circumstances where we're trying to improve our legal or institutional right. credits, so to speak, uh, we're putting the money back into the system. Mm -hmm. We have probably another 150 to $175 million of projects on the boards now that will mm -hmm. start construction next year. Right. So we're in the process of reinvesting. Sure. Right. That's where the money's going. Right. Now, does that a lot of that money or any of that money go toward the debt? Is that how, how, yes. how are we handling our debt anyway? I mean, and, and from what I understand, say a billion dollars of our debt is in projects and water lines we need to replace. So that's not actual debt yet. It's debt that we're going to incur. Is that right? It's both. Okay. Um, the uh, debt situation is about a billion dollars. Right. The actual the we debt, owe right at present that's good that's not good. I, it's not good but it's good that you clarify um, that, right? but that's that's what it is the other the billion was factored in what work we need to do to be up to grade. 820 million 549 thousand a couple hundred million you know it's <laughs> that's that's what it is but if you throw in a few other things like some of the swaps that we deal with separately it's Why more like a billion so right. um, and we are dissolving the swaps wherever we can as right. those tranches become due right. we dissolve them and right. liquidate them right. so that we can get a handle on exactly what our future indebtedness will be mm -hmm. by converting them to fixed rate bonds mm -hmm. we get very good rates on bonds we right. get good penvest loans at one percent and we will be borrowing money in the future to do capital projects sure. All utilities are capital money intensive. Right. Right. So when you look at their books, you will find that they all have big debt service payments mm -hmm. simply because mm -hmm. that's the nature of a utility. Mm -hmm. They dig stuff up, they buy new stuff. Uh, they're always updating what they do. 
And that's what we're trying to do now, too. If you remember, 100 years, we didn't do anything. Right, right. And, that's, and I feel like that's part of why you have such big capital projects, right? It is. I mean, that's part uh, of the Hopefully 25 years big. from now, we're caught up on this for the future generations, and it's not going to be so costly. I would like to live to see the day when we lower yeah. rates. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. But I won't. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Councilman, I would like to add, too, to the director's credit and the board. Um, the uh, seeking out an award of the PenVest money, uh, which is part grant and part low interest loan, right. uh, better than the market rate is is key to you know increasing their financial right. position. And PenVest is working right now with the director and his team on additional awards and making yeah. Pittsburgh a case for how you know that money can be spent well right. and uh, and help the authorities' right. position. So, so. so let me tell you my disconnect with uh, Aqua was okay. They don't want any parts of our sewage and our, you know, No, they don't. Okay? Nobody does. So that to me is like, and that brings me to my final <coughs> uh, question for you, is um, okay. like Councilwoman Kale Smith, okay? Uh, to me, you don't even supply my water, okay? But this water runoff, the, the water the containment is, is just out of control. Um, I don't feel it's the city's fault. I don't feel it's, in most cases, it's not PWSA's fault. You can look to some sores and, and some curbs that are, you know, streets that haven't been milled. You can look to that all day long. But uh, in some cases, I don't think anybody's going to stop the water. When we talk about Provost and about 88, I don't care what you do. I don't care how big a wall you build, how many drains you put in. And I hate to see PWSA invest in a capital project to try to fix something that we're not going to fix. Okay. So I've already come to the decision on my part, and I'm putting request into the capital budget to have those folks bought out. Uh, to me, it's cheaper, it makes more sense. And the big picture here is the, the green gardens that everybody can create in the spaces where we can contain that water, almost like a reservoir, and then release it slowly. And this could help flooding control all up and down 51. So when we're talking about putting a main line in, uh, you know, I think it's a fraction of the cost as it would be to buy these people out. I'm talking about 28 homes, some on 88, some on Provost, okay? Um, that to me, it's like to, to, to even go down the road to f try to figure out how you're gonna stop that water from coming in, we're spinning our wheels and uh, to buy them out would be a fraction of the cost I feel. And I don't know what's involved in trying to control all that water, but it cannot be uh, cheap, I could say that. So, so I would like a commitment from you, okay? The water, um, Councilwoman Gross, you know, has complete belief in you. She about threw out uh, Aqua when I had him here one day, you know. She's a loyal, very loyal board member of yours. I tried to get him down just to have a quick conversation, <laughs> and uh, that didn't work out too well for Aqua. And uh, so, but, but most recently I asked her, I said, because I'm not quite sure myself, I said, are you completely confident, uh, Deb, in the fact that PWSA can deliver clean, safe water? For generations to come and she had without hesitation said yes and that means a lot to me I can tell you because she has much more of an insight than I do but where I really need you is in storm storm management and I, if I think I have easier time getting the mayor to uh, approve my capital budget request if you were to try to put into the pot for us um, ultimately route 51 and 88 is a complete mess it's in shambles every time it rains they have to shut 51 down people leave their homes to a T of these 28 homes I'm talking about, every which one of them are willing to sell, as long as they can get fair market value for their house, you know? And whether it costs, you got 28 houses there, I think I estimated roughly $3 million will buy out every one of those houses. Not that I feel it's a city's obligation to do that, I really don't. I feel like it's, whether it's the global warming, you could blame a lot of different reasons for it. It's not PWSA's fault either, but it's the most sensible thing to do because what it's gonna cost to try to correct and you know rectify these problems is just astronomical, I would think. It's an easy way out, people are happy to leave, but more importantly, it creates that green space or that reservoir space that we can hold really slowly and help control flooding all the way down 51. I do have a extensive experience in diverting water. I'm a roofing contractor, which believe it or not, it comes in handy in all these issues. You know, I, I can locate where the water's coming from, how much is coming, is it stoppable? These two areas, I'm convinced there's nothing, and so are the homeowners. There's nothing they say. They say, oh, what we need is a sore here. Oh, we need nothing. They, they know that it's not going to stop. Uh, providing the rains keep coming with the consistency that they're coming, I mean, 
They're going to contain, and it's like a river. And it's dangerous. Somebody probably is going to lose their life if, if we don't do something about this eventually. What, what I say when we do something, I don't want to be out there with your engineers or anybody because I feel like it's a lost cause. Let's, require, let's acquire that space, I feel. Let's get the Army Corps engineer. Then maybe they'll be interested in coming in for a real solution to help flooding downstream. But without that land, if we don't have that space to work with, we have nothing. All we have is neighbors that are getting flooded every, every other week. So, so to me, I would love to see a commitment from you on a financial commitment for buyouts, I think. We're talking 28 homes that make a world of difference here. And 20, 30 years from now could solve all these problems with the right people you know, uh, you know, figuring out what to do with that space. I think it's a heck of a lot cheaper from a business point of view. I think this is, again, a fraction of the money it would cost to actually do new infrastructure. I don't even know how you would go about, about fixing that. Um, another thing I'd like to say is, you know, when it comes to stormwater downspouts, I need help. Um, downspouts are now running out in one place on Queenston, which I know you're, you're familiar with, right? Um, we looked at his place, and I saw seven houses, I pointed out to him, where people around him, uphill from him, were putting their downspouts out onto the street. So guess what? You know how much water comes off a roof? I know how much water comes off a roof. A lot. Okay, that's contributing to it. The streets, I mean, there's a ton of things contributing to it. But what I'm looking for, and I'm hoping to get out on these sites like next week. With, do we have a professional, somebody come out there and say, look, this is, let's cut bait here we need to offer them a buyout or yeah we can put a big storm drain here and, and so we just talked about this yesterday yeah. and uh so do you want to talk about it uh we are in fact going to be uh, right now we're focusing on problem areas queenston happens to be one such problem area uh, the principal problem is that there are large tracts of land as you say that really don't have any stormwater control whatsoever the systems that were put in place either were not designed to carry stormwater or are already overloaded. The water system, uh, excuse me, the, the combined sewer system was only designed to carry a two-year storm event. We've been having 20 and 40-year storm events. So it was never large enough in the first place. Right. So we need to start looking at different ways of managing. Now, it just so happens that that sawmill run area is also under what they call a total maximum daily load, which is a water quality parameter, and we are required to meet certain conditions within a certain period of time, within the next five years. We have, in fact, begun implementing projects with 10 other communities in Sawmill Run, um, and the project areas that you're speaking of may just be uh, viable candidates to increase the uh, amount of of uh, water quality improvement we can achieve. We are working with the uh, uh, Corps of Engineers. They've funded two of our projects, that one of which is either starting construction or has started construction, which are all intended to help with this problem we have in, in the run, mm -hmm. uh, flooding problem we have in the run. Mm -hmm. So uh, then they have told us that if we can demonstrate the water quality improvements, then they're willing to fund additional projects. So. We have a staff that can come and look at these areas because we have been studying the entire stretch for the last two years. Uh, and uh, we also have a project that we've uh, joined forces with PennVest, excuse me, PennDOT. And PennDOT is going to uh, put out a design bid operate, design build operate contract, which they have the right to do and we do not. They're having us be their project manager we will manage the construction and execution of the work. Um, that's a $6 million project that we're going to be sharing costs with uh, surrounding communities. So the fact remains that what you're talking about is very analogous with what we've already started doing, and we would welcome the opportunity to talk further about it. I, I'm, going to be, I'm totally out of order, but I would love we, to say that this deserves a longer discussion. It does. We, yeah, each I of agree. us have our stormwater pains. I am yeah, trying yeah, to withhold yeah. no, mine no, no, <laughs> because no, we're no, here I'm, to talk I'm about done. the document. I'm done. I just am looking for somebody to get out there with me to help put these people's minds at ease, whether it's next week or the week after. Um, you know, I think we need Are to look and buying them out. I think that's the yeah. most common sense thing. Can you talk about the document? Yeah. Okay. If I may, I really want to bring the conversation back to the agreement, okay? And I have a number of questions that I'd like to ask uh, just for, for my own clarification, um, if I may. Um, so um, the, 
Down here there is a sort of a subtext that says the starred items may be issued with the PUC. And I'd like to kind of go over those first just in case there, there is a uh, a better explanation for it. The first one being the city will pay for water and fire hydrant service charges on a five-year phased in basis. Why would PUC have an issue with us paying for uh, fire hydrant um, uh, services phased in over five years? I don't understand. Remember that, that we're the problem. only government utility that they supervise. And so any other private utility that came in and bought an existing utility or established one would just simply charge you from day one. So that's what they want us to do, oh, and I we see. are not it's interested more in the doing phase that. Yeah. 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 Okay, got you. Uh, the cost of metering the uh, city facilities is split between PWSA and the city, which is reasonable, but do we have an, even an idea of what the metering costs could look like no. at this time? We don't. So It's uh, not so going to break the bank, but it's, it could range between, I don't know, what three, do you think? Three to five million dollars. Yeah. We, we did allow a much higher higher amount to account for plumbing needs inside government buildings, which is what we've just let a contract to evaluate. Um, and once we have that information by June of next year, we'll be able to give you a firm uh, estimate as to how much it will cost to do the, all of the buildings. My, my thought processes at this point in time are going uh, along the line of Councilman O'Connor in the budgetary impact. Of, of what we're agreeing. I think this is an absolute, honest, uh, forthright attempt to correct structural problems that have existed for decades. And I do think it's a good faith effort, and I will support it. I might have a couple of suggestions over time. Um, all members were invited by the administration to come over and to be briefed. I believe most members accepted that invitation to go over and to be brief. So we did have some of this conversation, but I'd kind of like to boil down a little bit more into the, uh, uh, the, the specifics of, of the agreement and the costs that we may uh, be beginning uh, to see. Uh, another issue that uh, PUC could have a problem with is uh, PWSA making voluntary payments to the city phased in over five years uh, in terms of the cost of appraising the water facilities for fee. That again is the five year phase in uh, and anywhere now that that's that just because they don't think we should do that at What's all. That property tax that was talking about? Uh, because we're tax exempt, so yeah. that's a fight we would have with them. So, so um, d drill down into that a little bit more for me. Why? We're a government unit. And because we're a government unit, we don't pay taxes. No government unit pays taxes. But we wanted to act more like a utility, and so we voluntarily put into this agreement that we would subsidize the city for those tax amounts that they would be getting if we were bought by a public utility. And do we have a general idea of what that amount might look like? 110000 for the uh, payroll think, tax. Gotcha. Okay. No, and I'm, my calculation on the PERTA was only 5000 but that's because the assessed values on city properties are so bad. Okay. That, now I understand. I Better. Um, that was part of your presentation. Um, so the street sweeping and PWSA's desire to, to incur some of the cost of street sweeping. I would agree with you it's one of the major problems why we're having the, the problems with our, our sewer overflows and those things. But as a member of the um, uh, Equipment Leasing Authority, I believe the desire of the city is to somewhat pull back on street sweeping um, and not to be, because it can be, burdensome and cumbersome and getting people to move and we get requests from neighborhoods like Oakland all the time it's terribly difficult to try to move their car to clean the streets and those kinds of things so uh, how do we how do we balance out the the desire to to see an effective street sweeping program which is clearly impacting our ability to have proper storm management with the desire of the city to perhaps begin pulling back on street sweeping programs we need to look at that one of the issues is that we are under an EPA consent decree to do those things. Street sweeping is one of them. And we will pay the fines, which could be as much as like a million dollars a day, if you don't comply and we get cited. So we want the street sweeping to continue. And in order to do that and avoid the fines, we're willing to pay you and reimburse you for those costs associated with the half of the city that is required under the EPA consent decree. 
to be swept. So a lot about what I like about what I see in this agreement is a level of accountability that clearly never existed, which boggles That's the what mind. That's trying to do. Which I do agree. But how then do we, how do we provide a level of accountability that says we have swept X amount of miles of street and, uh, and removed X amount of debris to keep in compliance with an EPA regulation? Is there a formula well, for that? Yeah, if public mm -hmm. works can do it for snow plows, they can do it for street sweepers. And we do that now, do you know? Or no, is we that, Okay. We, we can. We, we will have to in order to be able to demonstrate to EPA and the DEP that these compliance requirements are being met. We will have to show them that the miles of streets, where those miles of streets that have been swept, how frequently. Look at the snow plow tracker. And I, if I believe, Director, you can correct me, those conversations started well over six months ago about how to actually monitor and track because of ahead of the MS4 submission? Right. Yeah. It's bigger than just tracking them. It's also measuring the volumes of debris that you right. pick up and all sorts of things that we don't have the capacity to do. Not much but that. we certainly don't want to, as PWSA, to get into the street sweeping business. You do it already. Right. Why don't I we agree. just pay you to do it? How are we going to determine what you're going to pay us to do that? It's reimbursement for the cost. So if you buy new street sweepers, that's Certain percentage. included. We can allocate those costs. Yeah, yeah. sure. And then public works can calculate them. Here's, here's the, the, the thing is, though, that the EPA requirement is for not just for the neighborhood served by the PWSA for water. This is, this is for the entire city, mm -hmm. yeah. which would be something new and different in the South Hills of the city of Pittsburgh. You're going to see a street, uh, yeah. street sweeper uh, you know, in the South Hills? Yeah, so. Councilwoman and I were having conversation for the meeting about an email that I got uh, over the weekend about it. Um, same thing about uh, that, uh, I want to go to the next uh, uh, asterisk item here uh, and just to make certain that I'm clear as to why they're asterisk. So PWSA will grant a five-year exemption on governmental property tap-in fees, spray pools and that. Uh, the exemption will not apply to URA development type projects. Again, that's about the five-year um, uh, uh, slow factored in. Moratorium. Yeah. Um, uh, but do we have an idea or a general cost of what tap and fees are going to look like at one point in time as they are factored in? It's, it, we're fiduciary agents, right? That's the role no, we have here is we manage the purse. We don't manage the purse either, right? That's really dependent on the city because it depends on what facilities you construct. Right. So look at your own capital plan. So the tap and fees would be all for new construction? Yes. Okay. But only for government. Any new buildings. construction of something new, that brings right, water. governmental government new building. construction. Right, got it. And just to to one of the questions that came up related to these things are the URA already pays water bills on its properties. So does the school district. So does the housing authority, and the parking authority would pay, but their water usage is so minimum that I don't know whether they do or not. I think they do. Okay. Um, so let's pretend either party decides to terminate the agreement within a 90-day notice. Where do we go from there? Right where we are now. Yeah, that's not a good place to be. Well, it's a... We don't want to be where we are. I mean, I agree. We, you know, we need You may that. want to terminate it, too. No, I understand that. You may no, no, have no, I agree. to do that. No, 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 please. I'm playing devil's advocate yes, here I more understand. than anything else. I understand the, the need for a termination clause. I do get it, but it seems to me... And uh, I'll echo some of the comments that have gone around the table already. We're in a much better place than we have been in decades, and 90% and of it is the personnel that's now in place that is the governance, if you will, of, of uh, PWSA. And it, it creates a great level of, of, um, of faith in me in, in that the organization is the people, and clearly the people are, um, are shining in the organization as we see it now. But... Um, I, I wonder, philosophically speaking, you know, where, how, and why we would want to terminate an agreement and why we would want to return to where we are, because it's not a good place. Well, if, we, if you don't want to terminate it mutual, by single party, you may want to discuss another way. We're open to discussing that if you want to talk about it. it I can't see that it... It wouldn't be in there. But it's been convenient for this agreement because we terminated it on February 4th. The PWSA did the termination. 
which has caused this new agreement. Otherwise, you would be getting a water bill for 100%, and you would be getting nothing from us for things like pension and whatever. It would be a, a warfare on each item. I would rather have this put together in one agreement that guarantees the city certain incomes and guarantees us what we have to ask for under the PUC um, all in one package. If we want to change that going forward, we can do sidebar agreements or we can do a new agreement. Agreed. I, I, I'll reemphasize. I think it's a it's a good faith effort to correct structural deficiencies that have existed for decades. And, and, I, I, and I applaud everyone that that has taken a role in 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 crafting it. I, I just uh, I'm, I appreciate that. I, w I did want to address a couple of things that you said, um, and, and a couple other uh, points. This idea of the PUC issues the PUC, PUC has trouble with. I think you've got to have some language in this as to. If they say no, then what? Then what? You know what What's I mean? the, so, what do we do? Um, you know, there's got to, and, and I don't know. There's probably no opportunity to pre-negotiate this with the with the PUC, but there's got to be some language in, and maybe it just falls into the disputes clause or something. I don't know, but there there should be another opportunity for us to talk if the PUC says, if C says okay, you can't do that. So I don't know how you want to work that in into the into this language. Um, the well, other thing is, I'm going to agree with Councilman O'Connor. That just saying you want it to keep public isn't enough. You've got to do more than that. And and the city of Baltimore Council passed an ordinance, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. this it must know, be. City charter so. referendum, right? Yeah, so right. So they amended their city charter, which is exactly a, a separate process, and it, you can't do that in a club agreement. Yeah, but you could do it. But you could do it separately, and council yes. should consider that. Yes. Yeah, council yeah, should be considering that. I'm definitely that. doing research on it. Thank um, you. The other thing is, um, I don't know what happens now to the purchase for a dollar. After it's on the lease, so many it's years, not in this agreement. so yeah, so it's, that's something that you need to address. Um, and then just two more things that Councilwoman uh, Harris raised: um, the idea of curb to curb street replacement uh, is something that a lot of municipalities do and require. I mean, it, it, it's there's a cost issue to that, but uh, it is something that you should consider. Um, I think her issues with respect to liquid waste. Um, oh, I see. Is is it will be addressed by the Alcasan trunk line issue. Um, and then finally, the Social Security offset, and there's no way you can have that can continue uh, with, we have some people in this system who don't have it, some who do, there's gotta be uniformity. It's a basic fairness issue. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that's probably not something for this uh, discussion, but it really, it really needs, or, or maybe not something for this agreement, but it should be in this discussion right now as to what you're gonna do about the offset moving forward, so. So, uh, so Michael was able to sort of formulate into verbiage what I had going on in my brain and didn't quite know how to get onto my lips. And that was, if they do say no, or if there are issues, then where do we go from here? I think too often we wet ourselves to this idea that everything is carved in stone, but everything we do here is fluid. Everything we do here is, is subject to be reopened and reexamined and, and improved in any way that we can. So, um, uh, I have some level of comfort that, you know, if there there are disagreements with the PUC in things that we have agreed with here that we'll, as ladies and gentlemen, meet again and figure out how to, to you know, craft an agreement that is going to serve us in our best interest. Um, and then finally, uh, uh, there is a, um, uh, there is severability, if you will, uh, at the very end where it says PUC code regulations, if the PUC code regulations prevail if any provision of this agreement conflicts with them. Um, and I think that was pretty much the, the basis of my question. I was going to ask, uh, in terms of signing off in the agreement, why council didn't sign the agreement. Um, uh, uh, but, you know, we, we, we come and go. Administrations come and go. Mayors come and go. Councils come and go. I like the idea of something that is a little more concrete that, that states definitively, no matter what, the water system will always remain in the hands of the public. And whatever that looks like, you know, and in time, uh, and we need to work towards that, I'm more than happy to work towards that. But as far as where we are today with this, I do. I, I believe it's a good faith effort. We might need a tweak here or there. I'm happy to, to help any way I can. I will support, I know the council, I know our desire as a city, both administration and council is to complete this before we leave for our recess. I'll do everything in my power to assist that we are able to do that before we, uh, before we do recess. And uh, my mind's open and my door's open. So 
Uh, thank you. So uh, that's first round. If we want to go second round, Councilwoman. I'm going to still, I'm not going to talk about Dragoon Way, which I know that you all are working on. I'll just leave it at that. Just for the shout out to the people of Dragoon Way. I'm sorry I'm not going to open up into flooding issues today. Thank you so much for, and we look forward to seeing an expeditious resolution there. Um, so as I think we heard from most council members that there is will in this body to um, protect the, the, this asset as a public asset. <coughs> One of the things that um, I've been going back and forth with our budget office about is whether or not um, in spelling that out, it should be covering um, operate and maintain agreements. So just again, as a refresher for everyone's mind, it was the PwSA Board of Directors that gave the operating contract to Veolia Corporation, one of the biggest water corporations on the planet that was, you know, we sued as to ruining our water quality and our billing and fired them and sued them and have now added capacity back in-house um, so that it is, you know, PwSA employees operating and maintaining the um, asset and to me, that was a very educational experience, right? That that even that degree of privatization was bad. Yep. Did not go well for the citizens it of the city. It did. And it was this council that was very integral with um, Councilwoman Kale Smith's leadership, with Councilwoman Harris's leadership, with my um, participation on the board in being very vocal critics <laughs> of that even preliminary privatization. That that interim privatization, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it was very, it was, a, it was a, a real eye opener for me and that's one of the reasons I've been such an ardent um, uh, supporter of this asset remaining public and publicly operated. So what this language does not have is kind of defining that and spelling that out. And I think a cu couple other members have um, talked to this. It was very eloquently um, presented to us in a post agenda format like this that Councilwoman Strasburger hosted on kind of what is privatization or public-private partnerships um, by the think tank out of California, whose name I can't remember. It was GBFOM was his act, the, the mnemonic for privatization that I can remember, but I can't remember what the actual uh, think tank was, it'll come back to me. So we often use, and many people often use, kind of designing and building or financing with board oversight and public oversight, but once you get down into those other levels of operating and maintaining, let alone selling, um, that you're really looking at the loss of control. In other words, it was in Flint, Michigan, also Violio Corporation that was operating, maintaining their water system when they encountered the same public health crisis um, around lead issues and other, uh, other contaminants in the water system. And that was, that was their state overseers, I think, that had come in and taken away the operating and maintaining of that system away from their local city council and put it in the hands of Veolia. And so when the citizens had their very legitimate grievances, it took them well over a year to get action because um, the state didn't want to hear it and Veolia didn't want to hear it and their city council was powerless. And so that was a very, very um, um, clear lesson uh, for me. So I'm definitely open to not only in this document, but outside of it. And I have contact. I had the councilman from Baltimore who proposed that referendum at that same post agenda, didn't I, Councilman Strasburger? I yeah, think he was here. Councilman Henry came here, and here. you were there too. So we were all <laughs> we all lived through that. Um, and so I'm open to anybody's good um, uh, suggestions for our um, home rule charter and how that could be amended to um, protect this water system. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Councilwoman Harris. Uh, it does say here, the water service line and the sewer laterals, that the city would treat them like commercial. Now, well, the laterals for residential right now started to curve, but the commercial make you dig all the way out to the middle of the street. So is that what that means, that everybody's going to be treated that way, and that if they have a problem with their lateral, they got to go to the middle of the street where the sewer is? Yeah, go ahead. I mean, we're talking about the city, not about everybody. Right. Just remember that. 
We, city we are commercial. Is okay, it doesn't spell that out. It just says, okay, and it shouldn't be that we're treated like commercial because we're government. It would be great it's if there were government. a government rate, but PUC does not have one. Well, then yeah, but they I have to one. make one. I want one. They need to make one for you, right, and me, and all of us. And um, the other issue is, and I'm probably going to try to have a post agenda on it, is the plastic that the city is now putting down on the streets works good in some places that don't have winters, but we have winters. And when you scrape it up, it's like throwing a couple boxes of straws down a catch basin. So we really need to look at that too. Besides that, it causes cancer. You're talking about the thermoplastic yes. we put down? Yes, thermoplastic. I think Director Rick's happy to talk about why we transition to that. Okay, then maybe we'll have a post agenda. It will be a short post agenda, I believe. So, yeah. Not too long. All right, good. Mm -hmm. Councilwoman Strasburger, anything uh, further? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank hey, you Bruce, all for I have being. One question. Oh, I'm Just sorry. Real quick. It's, uh, you looked like you blended in down there. I'm I was. Sorry, I apologize. I, yeah, I was, I was content with what, but I did forget <laughs> one thing. I'll be quick. Uh, the Route 51, bottom of Nobles Lane. Are we doing a project there? PWSA doing a project increasing the, the height of that wall is, or something? Is that right? Do you know? And I'll have to look into it. Yeah. yeah, I don't know which one that would be. So, Grant, I don't know if you know anything about that. So I caught wind of this through, yeah. like, somebody. I don't know who it was. And I'm like, I'm on the phone with them every day, whether it's Ronnie's tires or, you know, the people are getting flooded out. I'm like, I need that good piece of news. I'm like, where's the communication? I'm the one out there. You know, I'm the one that I, I can't wait to give them a piece of good news, like we're doing something there, you know. Nobles so, Town at 51, you're saying? It's uh, Nobles, Lane Nobles Lane in 51, Lane. I think. Nobles Lane. It's, Nobles Lane. It's, the yeah, there's like, the there. yeah. Okay, there's like a little bridge there, yeah. Okay, we are. We are. Bottom of White. Yeah, Bottom of White. Bottom of White. Maytide, we do have a project there. There's yeah, a substantial right. yeah, problem. I, I know and that. And we one. are looking at uh, retention yeah. in a property that's on uh, the main main drag there yeah yeah so I don't know if I was to say somebody had told me I, I kind of cut it through the grapevine but uh, I'm hoping so you know in this way at least with Ronnie's you know where that little bath pool bathtub is uh, maybe I hope alleviate some of that so if there is something going on please let me know so I could yeah I think it. so I think DPW mentioned that we're still trying to clarify exactly where okay. and that's because we thought it was a Jacob and whited yeah. that was the discussion in our meeting I think yeah. we're trying to figure out what's happening yeah, yeah. okay good councilman thank you very much yep. thank you all for being here this was a great right. conversation you uh, uh, thank you again uh, may I have a motion to adjourn our uh, post agenda <laughs> uh, much coffee thank you we're adjourned <laughs>